This is Nick with LogosByNick.com and in this tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create these isometric illustrations using Inkscape. And this is a topic that I've gone over in the past, however, thanks to some of the newer features in Inkscape version 1.0, it now makes it easier to make your designs have rounded corners, as you can see in my example design here. So that is one of the things I will be going over in this tutorial. But before we get started, if you'd like to learn more about how Inkscape works, be sure to check out my Inkscape Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over every tool and feature in Inkscape and I explain what it is and demonstrate how it works. I'll have a link in the description of the video if you want to check that out. So the first thing we want to do when we have Inkscape open here is set up our documents so that we are all working with the similar view and layout. So I'll come over here to where it says view, make sure we have custom selected, come up here to where it says zoom, I'm going to zoom in at one to one. You're going to want to make sure you have snapping enabled up here. It should be enabled by default, but just make sure it's enabled. And the snapping we want over here is snap to cusp nodes and then snap to grids, which is over here. Very important for this to be enabled. So what I'm going to do now is set up the isometric grid on the canvas. So I'll come over here to where it says File, go to Document Properties. First, I just want to get rid of the page border. I'm going to click on this box right here that says Show Page Border to get that out of the way when we're trying to create our designs. And over here where it says Grids, let's click on that tab. I'm going to choose Axonometric Grid, click New. And for the grid units, I'm going to choose Pixels. And if you notice, we now have an isometric grid on the canvas here. I just want to make those lines a little more spaced out because there's too many of them on the canvas as it is. So where it says spacing Y, I'm just going to change that to 50. Hit enter. There we go. That's a good, that's a good happy medium right there. So I'll go ahead and close out of that. And when I'm drawing isometric designs, what I like to do is I like to start with the smallest objects first and then draw outwards to the largest objects. That way I can ensure that I don't run out of boxes as I'm drawing objects. So what I want to do now is draw the buttons of the phone first because those are the smallest objects. What I'm going to be drawing is a, a phone laying flat on a surface like that. So let me grab let me grab the uh, Bezier pen which is over here. And if you notice the way the grid works is every five lines you have a main line which is slightly darker than the other five lines. So what I'd like to do is I like to start at one of the main lines right here. Click to create a point. Bring the line to the other main line right here. Then over here, then up back up here, and then back to the starting point. And this is going to be the home button of the phone. And this button's going to have rounded corners, but I'm going to go back and add that later. I'm going to draw everything with sharp corners first, and then I'm going to go back and make the corners rounded later. So the next biggest object for me to draw would be the screen. So let me start out here. The screen's going to be over here, represented by this area. So I'm going to start five units away from the button on the left side and one unit up like that and bring it the same distance to the other side using the main lines as a reference. And then I'm going to bring this out here. One, two, three, four. Now, you know what? I missed that. Let me undo that by hitting Control Z. There we go. It's pretty common to miss the line you're going for. So uh, if, if, you, if you end up missing the line, just hit Control Z to undo it. Or you can go back and edit it with the nodes tool, which I'll show you in a minute. So let me bring this out here, out here about that much up here, and then back to the starting point. Now if you notice, I totally missed the mark there. This line is not parallel to this line right here, so I'm going to grab the nodes tool and fix that. I'm just going to put that back over here where it should be. Looks like I missed it by one. Let me try that. To move around, I'm just holding control and rolling up and down the mouse wheel, and then I'm pressing down the mouse wheel and moving mouse to, 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 to move around like that. Looks like I gotta go one more like that. There we go, that looks that looks right. So what I'm gonna do now is create the other button up top here, or actually the speaker, the speaker hole. I'm just gonna use this, duplicate this object. So let me grab the select tool, click on this object, press Control D to duplicate it, and then click and drag this up here, right there. So what I'm gonna draw now is the outside edge of the phone. So let me go back to the Bezier pen. And I'm going to start this one unit away, one unit away from the button here, and then down here. Bring this out to about there. That's looking good. Out here. And bring this one unit away from this edge right here, and then back to the starting point. Now I totally missed the mark there, so let me go back and edit that. Let me grab the nodes tool. This needs to be 
This needs to be right here. Okay, that's looking good. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start rounding some of these corners. Let me go to the Select tool. I'm going to start with the button right here. I'm going to click on that, and I want to open up the Path Effects menu. We'll go to Path, Path Effects, and I'm going to click to add a new Path Effects, this little plus button right here. And I'm going to look for corners. If you can see, I already have it typed in because I was using this previously. You just type in corners. If you remove the search function, the, the, the search text, it shows you all of the path effects. If you just type in corners, there you go. There's the path effect we're looking for. The corners, fillet chamfer. There we go. And what that's going to do is, let me zoom in on this. If we grab the nodes tool, you notice we have these four green knots in the corners here. And you could take these knots and use it to round the corners like that. I don't just want to round that one corner though, I want to round all of these corners. So I'm going to click and drag over all four of those knots and then just click and, whoops, click and drag this in like this to make these rounded. And it looks like the snapping is getting in the way, so I'm going to temporarily disable snapping and then move this in like that. And now I can turn snapping back on. And you know what, I'm going to leave it off because we have to do the same thing to the other buttons. So let me come back out here and do the same thing to this speaker hole right here. Add a path effect corners, click and drag over all four points, and then just click and drag inward like that to give up rounded corners. Over here there's four different settings. This is the fillet setting. If you choose like chamfer, it's going to give you a different style of corner. If you're getting this different style of corner when you do this, just make sure you have fillet selected. It should be there by default, but maybe, maybe it's not, so that's how you can set it back if that's the case. And now I want to round the corners of the phone edge here. So to do that, let me select that object. Add a new path effect, corners, and for this one I want to turn snapping back on because I want to snap to one of these grid lines. I'm going to click and drag this down, or you know what, I have to select all four of them. Let me click and drag over all four of them, bring that in like that. There we go, that's looking pretty good. Now that's looking more like a phone. Okay, so let me, uh, let me go back to the select tool. Let's select over all of these objects and convert them to paths. We'll go to path, object to path. And that's going to change that from a path effect to now it's an actual it's an actual path, not just a path effect, if that makes any sense. The reason why I do that is because this is this is sort of a new path effect and it doesn't really function uh, the way it should sometimes. I'll, there's sometimes I'm working with this path effect and like the corners will just randomly go back to being sharp and I'll have to go back and make them rounded again. That's why I like to convert them to path beforehand so I don't have to go back and do that. So uh, let me now, let's now take the button here and just raise that to the top with this button over here, raise, raise selection to the top. Same thing with the screen right here, raise selection to the top. Nothing visually is happening on the screen as you do this. We're just doing this so that we have these objects layered above the background, which is the phone edge here. And I'll do the same thing to this, raise this to the top. And now I want to fill this in with some color. So I'm going to take this object right here and let's open up the fill and stroke menu with this button over here. Or you can press Control, Shift, and F on the keyboard. And I'm going to fill this in maybe with like a light shade of gray like that. That's looking pretty good. Let's get rid of the outline by holding shift and clicking on the X over here. I might actually might want to make that a little darker so I can see it better. And now I will do the same thing for this button. I'm going to make this maybe a darker shade of gray. Let me get rid of that outline by holding shift and clicking the X. And I'll do the same thing over here. I want to make this the same color, so I'm just going to grab the dropper, which is over here, and just select that so it's the same color. And then get rid of the outline by holding Shift and clicking the X. And now I will grab the screen, and I guess I will make that, I guess I'll make that white for now. Let me get rid of the uh, outline by Shift clicking the X like that. And now what I want to do is I want to give this phone a little bit of depth. I want to make it look like it's a, a three-dimensional object. So I'm going to I'm going to duplicate this background over here and move it down a little bit. So let me select the object, right click it, and go to duplicate, then hold control and move it down like that. And drop it to the bottom over here where it says lower selection to the bottom. And I want to make this the same color that this object is over here. So let me grab the dropper tool, click on that, and there we go. I actually might want to move this up a little bit. I don't want that much depth. That looks pretty good right there. So if you notice here, there's an empty space between the edges of these two objects right here. So we want to add lines right here to fill that in to make it look to make it look the way it's supposed to look. To do that, maybe I should put this down back to where it was to better illustrate that. 
to better illustrate what I'm about to do. So I'm going to put that back to where it was. I'm going to select both objects, the original background. I'm going to hold shift, click the, uh, the new background we just created, and I'll go to extensions, generate from path, and extrude. And I want to make sure we have polygons selected and not lines, and go ahead and click apply. And that's going to create new objects between the two objects we have selected, as you can see here. It created all of those objects. So I want to take this object that we just created, and I want to ungroup that with this button up here, or control shift ungroup. And I want to get rid of everything except for these lines over here that we just created. So I'm going to hold shift and click on that little object right there to, to deselect it. Come over here, hold shift, click on this object to deselect that, and then press delete on the keyboard to get rid of everything else. And now I can take this object, hold shift, take this object, and then hold shift and take the bottom object and unify them all together by going to path, union. And as you can see, now it looks the way it's supposed to look. And if you temporarily disable, let me hold shift. If you hold shift and press three on the keyboard, it will temporarily disable the grid on, this, on the screen so you can see how it looks without the grid getting in the way. I might want to take this screen and make this darker like that. There we go. Now it's looking more like a phone. Okay, so the phone part of the design is out of the way. I'm now going to create like a little uh, like a little chat bubble to go over the, uh, the top of it here like I showed you in the, the design of the thumbnail. To put the grid back to where it was, I'm just going to hold shift and press 3 on the keyboard. Or, other, or in other words, you just use the pound key, which is up here where it says view, page grid. That's another way you can toggle that off and on. I just like to use the keyboard shortcut. So let's create a chat bubble to go over here now. So I'm gonna come over here out of the way. I'm gonna create three circles to make it look like somebody's typing. So let me grab the Bezier pen. Start right there. Again, I'm using the main lines in increments of five to create these. There we go. I'm just gonna duplicate this. Control D, move this over here so that it's one unit apart. Control D so that it's one unit apart. And now I'm going to draw a box going around these three that is two units apart. So let me go back to the Bezier pen. I want to start out two units away. One, two. Come up here like that. One, two. Good. Over there. And then back to the starting point. Let's see if that worked. Okay, yeah, it looks like I got that right. All right, so now what I will do is I will round the corners of these objects here. So let me grab the select tool. Let me select this object, add a new path effect, corners, go to the nodes tool, select all of these nodes right here, and then just click and drag them in like that. Let me turn off snapping so that I can get these a little closer to each other without them getting in the way. There we go. Same thing over here, select that object, Add the corners path effect, make them rounded like that, and do the same thing to this third box over here. And now what I will do is I will do the same thing to this object right here. So let me click on that, add a path effect, rounded. And for this one I will turn snapping back on. Uh, maybe right about there. That looks pretty good. So now I want to grab the select tool, click and drag over all of these, convert these to paths by going to path, object to path, and now I'm going to create a little point down here on the bottom to make it look like a speech bubble. So let me grab the Bezier pen again. I'm going to come in over here a little bit, bring this down to about here, and then bring this across over here. This is the only line we're drawing that's not going according to the grid. So I'm gonna bring this up here like that. Maybe over here, that looks good. And then back to the starting point. And now we can grab this select tool and unify those two together by holding shift and clicking on the object next to it and go to path, union. And now it's one shape like a speech bubble. Now much like we did with the phone and the three dimensional drop here, I wanna do the same thing only going that way. So. Let me take this object. First, I want to color this in, actually. Let's take these three circles right here, select those all, raise those to the top, and then fill them in with white. 
Nothing's going to visually change on the canvas because the canvas background is white. So you have a white object against a white background. So it doesn't look like it's there, but there is a white fill there. Let me get rid of the outline by holding shift and pressing X over here in the bottom left corner. And then I'll take this and I'll make this something like blue or green or yellow or whatever, whatever color you want to make it. I'll just use that color of blue. Get rid of the outline. Shift clicking the X. And let me duplicate this by pressing control D and I will make this one a little darker like that. Maybe even use an off shade of blue like that. Bring this out here, send that to the bottom. This button over here, lower selection to the bottom. There we go. And now I want to extrude these two together. So let me hold shift and click on both of those and go to extensions, generate from path, extrude and click apply. And then just give it a minute to do its thing. When I was doing this tutorial, setting it up before, it took a while for this to load, but this time it, it went nice and quick, so that's good. Let me close out of that. We now have this object that we're looking for. Let me ungroup that with the ungroup button. And again, I wanna keep this object over here that's connecting these two points together. I wanna to keep this object over here, and I wanna keep this object over here, and I wanna delete the rest of them. So I'll hold shift, click that object to deselect it. Hold shift, click that object to deselect it and then come over here, hold shift, click that object, deselect it. And all we have selected now are the objects we wanna get rid of. So now you can press delete on the keyboard and there you go. So let's take these objects right here that we just created, shift click each of them so we have all three selected and then hold shift and click the original and go to path union. And that's exactly what we're looking for right there. A three dimensional, a 3D style isometric chat bubble like that. So what I want to do now is place this over the design over the design. So I'm going to get rid of I'm going to temporarily get rid of the um, the isometric grid because we don't need it anymore. We're done drawing objects. So let me hold shift and press three on the keyboard to get rid of that. Let me disable snapping for now so that doesn't get in the way. Click and drag over this whole thing and press control G on the keyboard and place it over the object over here like that. Control shift to scale it down. And then you could take this, duplicate it, bring it over here. And if you want, you can make this a different color. Ungroup it. I'll make this yellow. Make this also yellow, but maybe an off shade, maybe like red like that. And then finally, you could take this, you could put like a little drop shadow down here by duplicating this object. I'm actually going to duplicate both of these objects, the light gray, hold shift and the dark gray. Control D to duplicate. Path Union, unify them together, make this black, hold control and just click and drag this down like that, send that to the bottom. That looks pretty good and bring the opacity of this down like that so that we have a little bit of a shadow there. It would look a little more convincing if this were a different color, which I think I'll do that now. I'll make this, I'll make this something like purple. I'll make this a lighter shade of that purple. And then I'll make these ones white. Or you know what, no, I'll use the same shade as that purple. And then this, I'll make this a darker purple as well. I'm just using the keyboard shortcuts to toggle back and forth between the dropper. The dropper tool is the letter D on the keyboard and the select tool is S. So I just like to toggle back and forth between those. Let me make that a little darker. That's looking good. Maybe add some more saturation to that. That right there is what I'm looking for. Come over here, make this. Now I can make this a little darker so it's a little more convincing. And I'd say that looks good enough. So I think that should do it for this tutorial. That's how you can go about creating these simple isometric drawings with rounded corners using some of the new features in Inkscape version 1.0. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And as always, thanks for watching.